brand, brand, brand is, has been, and always will be the most important thing in marketing, no matter who tells you different. Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about marketing trends of 2022. Yes, we're going to be talking about the trends that are happening this year and what to expect, but most of these trends are going to be happening over the next five years to a decade or more. So they're going to be very important for you and your business and your brand to grow into the future. Now, I'm not the only one talking about marketing trends by any means, uh, but I'm going to attempt to talk about some of this in a really unbiased way. Uh, I own a marketing agency focusing on e-commerce, a consulting company that focuses on fractional chief marketing officer and chief revenue officer type services, and an AR, VR technology company. So I'm really paying attention to a lot of these trends and a lot of the things that are going to help grow brands over the next several decades, really. So I'm looking not only yet, not only at this year, uh, but also over the next five years to a decade. So a lot of these things are going to be tried and true. And the first thing, the most important thing is what I started this video with, and that is brand. It's the non-sexy, uh, non-answer that a lot of people kind of want to look past. And that's the fact that brand, what people feel, think, see, hear from your business is what will ultimately determine whether they make a purchase from you or not, whether they recommend you or not. So a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about go into brand, but the very first thing that you need to do when thinking about making a marketing plan, whether it's a three month, a six month, a 12 month, a five year marketing plan, is how do we effectively build our brand into exactly what we want, right? So. You need to identify what do we want to stand for? What do we want people to think of when they think of us? So if you think of a few big brands out there, right? Like let's look at Patagonia. So Patagonia is something that um, I reference in, uh, in the uh, article version of this video, Marketing Trends, over on my website. But Patagonia has always stood for saving the planet, Right. They're not going to grow their massive business, which is massive now, at the expense of the planet. So all of the decisions that they make with their employees, with their products, with their partners, with their everybody, is all related to can we make a better planet? Can we make a big brand and products that still go towards or help saving our planet? That's their brand, and that has served them very well because all the way back to 1973 when they started – all the way up till now, they've attracted people who also want to respect the earth, also want to, you know, vote for eco-friendly, you know, uh, climate change uh, reversal uh, purchases, right? So th that's who they attract. And it's done very well, especially fast forward till today where our whole world is very eco-friendly, very climate change focused, right? So they're making purchasing decisions based on that. Patagonia is a great example of a company who knew what they stood for. They knew what brand they needed to make and wanted to make, and they have stuck to it over the course of time, right? Amazon, that's another really good example of an amazing brand. They have always and currently do and probably will continue to always look at the consumer first, regardless of their vendors who are selling on their platform or the brands that are selling on their platform or anybody else, their investors, uh, the stockholders. Even beyond all of them, they look at their customer first, the consumer. What can we do to give them exactly what they want with very few barriers uh, at the lowest possible price to make them happy? Hence the little smiley face, right? Everything they do is to make the consumer happy. Two-day shipping, lowest cost, free returns. Sometimes you go to return something and they say, you know what, just keep it. Like everything they do. So that is their entire brand, right? So brand will always be the most important thing. And I'm spending a lot of time talking about this at the beginning of this video because I believe it will literally make or break your business. If you don't focus on your brand, things like making sure it's a good product, customer service is amazing, the messaging is something that's very valuable to people. Uh, your marketing is not 
you know, advertising as much as it is adding value. All of these things go into the brand. If you're not focusing on that, you're losing opportunities. And you may be beat by your competitors that are focusing on brand. So that is number one of the marketing non-trends of 2022 is make sure that you focus on the brand. What do you want people to feel, hear, see when they see a product of yours or your logo or a store of yours or whatever it is? Okay, the second thing we're going to be looking at is personalized marketing. This is a big one because it's changing rapidly. Third-party cookies are going away as we know it. I think Google announced by 2023 they're going to be getting rid of third-party cookies, which are um, little trackers that follow you around the internet. It's it's the reason that you see an ad when you look at a pair of shoes on Amazon. You'll see a, a pair of shoes everywhere you go around the internet. And uh, ad platforms and ad networks and advertisers and media companies and everybody's collecting all these cookies on you to track you wherever you go around the internet, from your phone to your computer to your iPad. They're going away. Uh, but what is not going away are first-party cookies. First-party cookies are the, the uh, behavior tracking that happens when you go to a particular site, right? So it used to be that you would go to a website and you would look at something. You'd look at a product or you'd add it to your cart or whatever it might be. And then there would be third-party technology that's plugged into that website that tracks that. It could be Facebook pixels. It could be Google pixels. It could be ad, other ad platform pixels. It would track you. And it would say, you know what? They looked at this picture and this thing and this thing and this thing. And then it would save that data. And then it would you'd move on to another website and you'd do a bunch of things, you'd fill out forms, and it would collect all of this data and put it together into a bundle, and then it would sell it, give it away, you know, not give it away, but it would distribute it to all the platforms so everybody has information on you used to target you specifically with advertising. Very intrusive into, you know, your personal habits. Those cookies are going away, and they're being replaced by first-party cookies, which now means you go to a website, and that website, that brand, that business can track things like your purchasing habits of you, of their products, uh, where you go on the website. Um, if you enter in your information, your name, your email address, your credit card, you know, things like that, it, it uh, may save that information, but it's intended to make your buying experience better. And they won't turn around and sell that to other ad networks or other companies, right? So it's first party. It's like if you walked into my store and I said, hey, what's your name? Uh, where do you live? Uh, what products are you interested in? And you tell me, then I will save that information so that the next time you come in, hey, John, you like shoes, right? Size 10? So it's giving you more of that personalized experience. And this is where personalized marketing is going to come in big in 2022 and beyond. So brands and businesses need to start paying attention to their current customers and they need to start paying attention to what they like and their interests and their behaviors and save that data internally uh, in an effort to provide a better customer experience, learn about your audience, your current customers, and then use that to develop your content and your marketing uh, you know, in the future to try to attract new people. Another way that this will change is it will allow you to use your current website to try to collect user data. So you might want to amp up your requesting people to sign up for your text messaging or your email uh, or ask them via live chat if they'd like to you know, get more information. So you're trying to kind of funnel them in and ask them uh, to engage with you right when they visit your website. But this is the same thing for all other websites or platforms, right? So a company like Instagram, Facebook, Meta, they're still going to collect data for the people that are using their platforms, but they're going to be limited as to where that information can go, selling that to other parties or other people or other uh, platforms. Uh, media companies like the New York Times or Washington Post or Wall Street Journal, when you go onto their digital websites, they will collect their own data on you and use it internally to make your experience better, but they won't sell it to other people um, and it won't get kind of shared amongst other ad networks, right? So the data that is being collected on you is number one, not going to be intrusive. They're not collecting financial data unless you give it to them, unless you fill out a survey or something like that, but they're not tracking you 
with a little tag on your shoulder that's watching everything that you're doing. What they're doing is bundling this information together uh, anonymously so that it can say, hey, our customers are generally you know, clicking on this page, this is how they're interacting, and it can make decisions based on that. Now, this is still early. Cookies haven't been banned. Third-party cookies haven't been banned yet. So it'll be interesting to see how the, uh, the marketing industry shifts when we lose this ability. But one of the bigger things that's going to happen is that the targeting isn't going to be so micro-specific. It's not going to be based on, you know, you made a purchase three days ago that cost this much. And so we're going to show you ads based on that. It's not going to be that detailed. It's going to be general on who you are and the demographic and the bucket that you fit into, which honestly is going to be better because it will allow the best brands to win the advertising game. The ones that have the best content, the, the best messages, it's essentially going to bring us back to what TV started out as, which is, hey, here's generally the type of people that watch our TV show. And Here's generally the message that we want to send to them that is impactful. And we've done our research on our current customers to know this is a good message. And so then we're going to put it out there and we're going to let the chips fall where they may and the customers come through that, that respond best to this. A lot of advertisers are thinking this is going to crush their business. But honestly, if you look at the data, my... Uh, this micro detailed targeting that we've been doing over the past five or 10 years doesn't actually give a huge advantage. In fact, it annoys people. It annoys people more than it brings them in. So by losing this, this niche, super detailed targeting, we're not going to actually see, you know, if you're an advertiser that all you do all day long is turn on and off ads and you hyper uh, target people, you're actually not going to see that much of a difference in most cases. Of course, there's somebody out there that's going to prove me wrong, but in most cases, you're not going to see that much of a difference as long as you focus on the creative, the content, uh, and you focus on collecting data about who you who is your best customer, who's your who's the audience that you can target that will uh, is most likely to, to find value in your product or service, and then target based on demographic. Right. So personalized marketing is going to change in a big way. And as far as a, a marketing trend of 2022, we're already seeing brands adapt to this, trying to put more into content marketing, bringing people in organically and then giving them personalized experiences based on the, the decisions that they make and the questions that you ask. You can see this when you go to websites and they ask you to fill out a few questions to make your experience better. Uh, sometimes a live chat is the way to do that. Um, I believe it's one of the better ways because uh, it, it can pop up right when they get to a website. And as long as you ask a really good, valuable question that brings them in, you can get a lot of the information that you need to give them a great experience right in that live chat. And then if you get them as a customer, it's even better because now you can say, hey, here's your last purchase. Do you want this? You can recommend them things. You can upsell. You can cross sell. You can do all that kind of stuff. So personalized marketing is going to be big. Next, let's talk about voice marketing. Alexa, Siri. I don't want to say it too loud because then it'll all pop up, right? Uh, Google Assistant. Um, all of these voice assistants uh, are now in our lives everywhere, right? We all use them or most of us use them to listen to music or whatever it might be. And we're going it, to, it's integrating into more and more things. You can now, it's integrated into our cars, into our alarm systems, into our uh, technology, into our lights. So as this becomes more and more adopted by uh, our population, it will allow uh, marketers, it will allow brands to serve their customers who are, who are requesting their products or services over these voice assistants. I'll give you an example. So we're in the day and age now where everyone has an Amazon Echo device or something like that. And so we're commanding every day, hey, you know, Alexa, play this music or uh, hey, reorder me some toilet paper, things like that, right? And so it's going to be even more integrated such to the point where we're going to say, Alexa, find me the closest restaurant to my zip code, one three zero 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 zero. That's an extra zero, I think. Um, and make sure they offer sushi or hibachi or something like that. 
that's going to be a request that we make. It's going to be normal for us just to talk to our assistant. And so then uh, that assistant, its technology, its algorithm, will take that long request. That's the key, long. The long tail request, and it will go out and try to find the best answer across the internet. It's going to pull from search engines. It's going to pull from social media. It's going to call pull from directories, it's going to pull from websites, and it will kind of say, here's what I found. And it will display it to you. Now, it depends on the type of platform. If we're talking about um, Amazon's Echo, it's all voice, okay? It does have capability to integrate into your phones and things like that. So it could pull up a web page, but generally, Alexa is going to give you an answer, okay? Hey, find me the closest restaurant. She'll say, here's what I found. This restaurant, this restaurant, this restaurant. Would you like me to call to make a reservation? Yes. It will ring to your phone and you pick up the phone and make a reservation, okay? So that's how that would work. With Siri on Apple phones, uh, it will actually pull it up on your phone. So you could say, hey, Siri, uh, find me X, Y, and Z. And it will pull it up and she'll say, here's what I found. And it'll pull up uh, up on your phone, and then you can interact with it on your phone, right? Google Assistant would be both, because if you have an Android phone, it will pull it up on your phone. If you have a Google Assistant at your house, then it will just talk to you and say, here's what I found, and it will read it off. But as consumers make these requests more and more and more, the technology will advance. Brands need to prepare themselves for that. So you as a brand need to know how all of that works and the workflow because you need to make sure your Google listings are filled out to a T. All the information is in your Google My Business listing because if you're local, that's what these assistants will pull information from and make recommendations based on. So all the same things that go into SEO and search engine optimization are going to be very important for uh, uh, voice search as well. In addition, you can step that game up with uh, Amazon's products because you can build skills. Skills are apps, voice assistant apps that tell that device, Amazon's Echo, what to recommend or what to do. So think of it like an app for voice. Best example of this is, is Starbucks. You can literally go to your Amazon Echo and say, uh, Alexa, order me some Starbucks. I want to pick it up in 10 minutes or something like that, right? And the skill, which is in in Amazon, will say, great. Uh, if you haven't set it up yet, it'll say, go to your Am Alexa app and set up the skill. If you've already set it up, meaning if you just signed on and put in your information, then it will already be integrated to the Starbucks app and it will go ahead and order it for you. Uh, you can even reorder. So if you've been ordering things at Starbucks a long time, you can say, Alexa, order me, reorder my favorite drink. And it'll say, great, I just reordered it for you. It'll be ready in 10 minutes. It's amazing, right? So you either need to look into making sure that your your uh, SEO is, uh, is really uh, fine-tuned because all of the voice apps will pull from this. And if you want to take a step above that, then you want to look into creating your own skills, which will tell the voice apps uh, what to do and get your brand out there in a way that uh, a lot of other brands you know, haven't done yet. So voice assistants are gonna be huge. Voice marketing is gonna be huge. It already is, but it's something your brand needs to pay attention to if you want to stay uh, up to speed with consumers. Next, let's talk augmented reality. So uh, full disclosure, um, I'm a partner in an augmented reality, virtual reality technology company, and we help m museums and, and organizations and brands create these sort of AR experiences, whether it's somebody walking into a museum, holding up their phone and clicking on a painting, and then the painting talks to them, or you go to a website and want to uh, see what a product looks like, and it's you can grab it digitally and then show it, you know, hold your phone up to the house, the wall or something like that, and then see what that product looks like in your home. Companies like Amazon and Lowe's are already doing this, uh, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a super interesting and uh, ever-evolving technology that probably if you sell a product, you're going to be using in the future at some point because consumers are going to expect it. Right, they're going to expect that. Hey, if I'm going to buy this couch or this ear, these earrings or this watch or shirt or whatever it is, I want to see what it looks like on me before I actually purchase it. So, pay attention to what 
software companies and what apps out there are are able to be integrated into your website to allow you to show your product to consumers before they actually purchase it. This is going to be highly valuable because it's going to reduce the returns. If people get to see what it looks and feels like before they buy it, they're going to make a decision based on an experience they already had, even if it's a digital experience, right? So it should retur- it should retur- reduce the return rate, which is going to be great for your brand. In addition, it'll help you sell more because you can make a recommendation and say, hey, we just came out with this new t-shirt. Do you want to try it on digitally? Maybe it's a good fit. You, somebody tries it on, they're like, wow, I really like this. Tries it on, meaning like maybe they upload a picture or they take a selfie where they can see what they look like with the shirt on and they might like it and they might purchase it. Whereas before, they might have just looked at it on somebody else and said, I don't really like that. But they wouldn't know if they it looked good on them until now. So augmented reality will help you sell more products and it will, uh, uh, in theory, help you reduce the amount of returns that your e-commerce brand has. Next is social media. Social media has been around for about 15 years in a real way now, uh, you know, a real way where businesses have used it. And it's become commonplace, right? It's not a different thing. It's not the internet and then social media. It's it's just the internet now. You know, social media is just part of what we do. It's part of our everyday lives. But it's still growing and it's still becoming more and more important. There's a common evolution that is happening with social media platforms and it will probably continue to happen for the foreseeable future. A social media platform comes up, let's say Facebook. The younger generation is like, oh, I want to go on this new thing. They go on this new thing, they socialize, they use it, they use the shit out of it, and it becomes really popular. When the younger generation does it, the older generation is like, wait a minute, what's this thing all about? Then they go over and they start using it, and they start asking their kids and their you know, peers and everything, like, you know, what, and they feel cool because they're on the, this new platform, and it's fun, so they use it. The younger generation is like, man, I don't like all these older people coming in here and you know, uh, commenting on my stuff and, you know, shitting on it and hate speech and whatever it might be, right? Like whatever the bad thing is that they, they, they think, uh, then they move over to another platform. Okay. By the way, I say the hate speech thing because like Twitter's had a real problem with that. Facebook's had a real problem with that. And the younger generation is just sick of it. So what happens? They move on to the next platform. So they move from Facebook to Instagram. Instagram's cooler. It's better. It's visual. It's fun. Then they do that. Right. Uh, then the same thing happens. The older generation moves over to Instagram and they start using it. And the younger ge- generation's like, I don't like to do this. By the way, I, miss, I missed one important component. And that is when that happens, when the younger generation and the older generation is both using a platform, advertisers are all over it. And then you get an influx of ads and marketing and it gets spammy, right? And that's another reason why that migration happens. So now they're over to Instagram. Now they use Instagram and they're, you know, super happy and everything's going great. And the same thing happens. Older generation comes over, advertisers come with them. The younger generation's like, I got to get away from this. And then they move on. They go to Snapchat. They go to TikTok. Okay. Then they are over to TikTok and here we are. The same thing is happening. The older generation is going on TikTok. Advertisers and marketers are going over there. They're like, this is where all our people are hanging out. We're going to target them. They start to do that. And then... Uh, the younger generation or niche niche populations audiences then go to more private, and so they're 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 not really leaving TikTok right now, but we're seeing uh, uh, platforms like Discord, which is private chats and communities, growing. We still see Facebook groups is huge. Facebook groups are huge. It's because they can be private. So even though people have migrated away from Facebook, they're still using Facebook groups to interact right? This evolution will keep happening. And so if we go back to my original point, which is brand is king, queen, it's the whole thing. Uh, if you can deploy your brand on any platform the same way, you don't, you shouldn't have to change. So whether you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok, you're on Discord, you're on Snapchat, wherever it might be, they all have their differences and limitations. But if you're communicating your brand in an effective way, you can move around from platform to platform and shift focus depending on what's new and relevant at the time. But the point of this is the social media will not go away. The younger generation will use it. The older generation will use it. 
even though it might be different platforms. And so if you are not on it in a significant way, you're losing revenue, quite frankly. So the best thing you can do is understand what your mission is, what your brand is, create pictures, copy, and videos, and put them out on the platforms and let the algorithms decide whether it's good for a certain audience or not. That's the best thing you can do. And you can do it with a cell phone. If you're a one man or woman show, uh, you can do it with high-end cameras if you have a 100-person company, right? But social media is not going away and it's still a trend. Next trend is something that we've been seeing for a while and that is mobile marketing. It is becoming more and more and more important as more and more people and countries, especially globally, if you're targeting globally, are moving away from buying things and utilizing desktops on a regular basis, right? In general right now, especially in first world countries, uh, people use the desktop environment to work or do like projects. They use their phones to do everything else. So if you're marketing to a consumer, you should always just build everything for a phone. And then after you've built it for the phone, go back and see how does it look, feel, sound on a computer. That's the best way you can do it. You don't really have to worry about websites because most themes, most you know, platforms are, they know this, they're, they're designing their products and uh, trying to build a user experience that works great on a mobile phone. But there's still things that you need to pay attention to. On your website, if you're custom coding stuff, you need to make sure that the text fits in the box that it's supposed to be in. You need to make sure that the spacing is right and there's not giant gaps of content as you're scrolling down a website. We've all seen it and it seems so simple. But oftentimes we just want to get our website up and move on to the next thing. Or we want to get our content out there and move on to the next thing. So a few tips I want to give you. When you're creating content, you're creating a website, you're creating a platform for uh, consumers for a mobile device, stick to just a few colors. Whatever the content is you're creating, to stick to just two or three colors max. Anything more and you're going to be getting confusing generally. Write as little amount of copy as possible in most circumstances, unless it's an article or a blog post, right? So get whatever you're trying to get across in one sentence, two sentences, three sentences max, okay? Make sure your images are not busy. Make sure they're clean, clear, you know, very simple. Uh, make sure your videos are uh, shot in a way that can be uh, utilized in portrait mode, which is like vertical up and down, right? Because as we watch videos like this, uh, a video that's filmed this way is going to be much smaller. So you want to make sure that you're just creating content or creating your website so that it's as simple as possible. It gets your message across as simple as possible. So that's one of my tips. The second tip is that uh, a lot of this is based on locations. Okay, so when you search in Google, it's based on your location. When you search on YouTube, it's based on your location. Um, it's going to recommend if you use Siri and you ask her for something, it's based on your location. So uh, you need to make sure that your business is primed for that. Understand who your audience is. Are you attracting people that are traveling? Are you attracting people that live, you know, where they're searching? Uh, and what are they going to see when they're searching for whatever it is, right? So a lot of this goes back to SEO. But just know that if you have your information in there, uh, in your listing, Google My Business listings, if you have your information uh, into your social media profiles, you know, your location, where your headquarters are, or who your customers are, uh, if you have this information in there, it makes it easier for people to find you on their mobile device. So create content that is simple, get your message across easy, and make sure that you understand that location is big even if you're a global company, even if you're a national company, you need to have your directories, your listings and everything set up properly so that when somebody searches on their phone, uh, when they're traveling, they see your restaurant, they see your law firm, they see your shoe store or company uh, first, right? So mobile marketing is going to continue to be big and uh, it's something that you need to think about when creating content and building your marketing plan. Next, marketing automation. Marketing aut automation is going to change my job. It's going to change your job. It's going to make everything so much easier. Um, and that is everything from ad buying, 
to sending emails, to building websites, to writing copy. All of the blog posts that I do for my website, I would say are 50% written by artificial intelligence. It's a, a platform that I use. It's called jasper.ai. Um, we'll uh, put a link of some of the resources in the description below. But Jasper, what you do is you write in the keywords, you write in the topic that you want to write about, and you click the button, and it will write some paragraphs for you or some sentences. You read those, you see if they're good, and if it's uh, good and you want to write a little comment, you can type in manually. If you want to keep the AI program writing, you click the button again and it will write some more. You check that and you go, you go back and make some edits. It's literally pulling all this information from what you've already written and the internet, Google, right? So it's pulling all this information in and writing. So instead of you physically having to go do research, think of the words and write them, it's just doing that for you automatically. And then what I do is I go through and I put my own voice to it and I add some jokes in and I do that. And then I hit the button again and it will learn from those jokes I put in. This is just one example of how things are becoming easier and more convenient and technology is helping us do that. There's programmatic ad buying, which decides what ads to show who and where and when for you. Um, now it has its limitations and you do have to pay attention, but that's been around for a little while. There's companies like HubSpot, which allow you to sort of automate a lot of the pipelines of your CRM. There's companies like MailChimp, which will allow you to send out emails automatically based on triggers and actions. So marketing automation is going to make your job easier. But there's one caveat. There's a big setup. So you really have to know all of these platforms and how to set them up so that their algorithms can do the job you need them to do. All right. So that work will really never go away or it's not going to go away for a while. So make sure you have somebody who understands marketing automation to set it up properly and then the rest will be much, much easier. The next one we're gonna talk about and look at is content marketing. Content marketing is, uh, it's one of the things that's gonna set the best brands of the future aside from uh, the, the brands that not many people remember, and that's content. Because the internet is so busy, the only brands that are gonna show through that don't exist today as some of the biggest brands already are the ones that are putting out content that people relate to. And so there's two types of content a company can put out. There's, there's content that is presented from the brand's perspective. So the brand's customers, the brand's influencers, the brand themselves are putting out content. And then there's personal content that can come from the employees, uh, the influencers, uh, the CEO or the founder of that company. And people engage on two ways. I'm a big fan of personal content because people trust people. So I put out content like this, even though I have three businesses, which some of you may be interested in, you may look into my profile and find them valuable at some point, rather than our companies putting out a lot of content. Because people know if a company puts out content, generally their goal is to sell you on something. If a person puts out content, if they do it well, they're trying to add value. They're trying to be helpful, right? So content marketing is not hard. Put out videos, pictures, and text that is valuable to your audience. Rinse and repeat and put as many places as possible. That's it. The algorithms of these platforms will do the rest, and it will tell you whether it's valuable or not based on the engagement. If you're not getting a good engagement, it's probably not great content. So you can shift, rinse, and repeat, and that's it. Put out content as a, as a personal brand if you are a founder or a leader, and then uh, uh, use a content recycling model, which is basically taking those long form pieces of content and then break them up into micro pieces of content, short videos, short little clips, little graphics. And then you're using one major piece of content to put out 30, 40, 50 pieces of content. And then your company can then go and share that, right? So the CEO can put out a video. It can be broken up into five different small videos. The CEO can put that out on their LinkedIn, on their Instagram, on their Twitter, and then the company can go and share it or they can post it directly to their uh, feed saying, check out these wise words from our CEO. That's one of the best ways to do content marketing, in my opinion, in the future. It's also one of the easiest ways. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about for a marketing trend for 2022 and beyond is marketing ethics. Marketing ethics are really big, especially after the pandemic where everybody has rethought everything. And it's quite simple. 
People want to do business with companies that are doing good or trying to do good. Okay. They don't want to do business with companies that are unethical or not trying to help our world in some way. So as I said before, Earlier in this video, one example is Patagonia. Patagonia has always been dedicated to fighting climate change and making our world a better place. Um, and their brand is built based on that and people are attracted to that because they're ethical. So you need to make sure that you're paying attention to just being a good company the same way you would be a good person. Be empathetic with your audience. Try to help the earth if you can be eco-friendly or net zero emissions or whatever it is, if you can go that way, uh, if you can do a little bit to help that, people respect will, will respect you. If you can give back to your audience or give back to your community, people will respect you. If you can hire ethically and give equal opportunities, like really give them, don't just say you're going to give them, people will respect you. Okay. If you don't do these things, especially Gen Z and younger will lose respect for you and you're going to lose customers. So marketing ethics is going to be huge. Just do the right thing and you'll be all right. That's it, everybody. Those are the biggest marketing trends for 2022. Uh, definitely some things that I'm focused on. My team and I are, uh, teams and I are all focused on these things because they are here already and they are growing. Um, and if you want this information in more detail, head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. You can read the full tutorial uh, article that I wrote and uh, uh, share it with your team. Hopefully it's helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more e-commerce and AR and business and marketing and sales advice. I'm going to be talking about it uh, in all these videos. Until next time, see you later. Thanks for watching.